Hi friends. Up till now, we have done with all the other plant tissues which practically make up the entire plant. That is the leaf, stem and roots. If you compare this to us humans, it's like all our organs that make up our entire body. Well, unlike us humans who can use an umbrella or wear some warm clothes or walk towards a shadier area, plants as we know are stationary and hence can't do any of that. But even if we didn't happen to have these things, we'd still have our skin to protect us, right? This we know to be tightly packed cells that line our entire body and acts as the first line of defense against any disease, bacteria or any environmental condition. So what do you think? Do plants also have a skin? Yes. Just like our skin, plants also have a special skin that lines their entire surface. It is made up of a single layer of continuous cells which protects all the internal plant tissues from the outside world. And this plant skin like layer is called the epidermis. The cells of the epidermis are transparent in nature. Now looking at the image, can you guess why? It's because they need to allow sunlight to pass into the leaf where it can be used by the chlorophyll present to prepare food. And just like the protective role played by our skin, this plant skin also plays an important role. Let's see them one by one. Let's begin with the first function by considering situations wherein we've fallen while playing or dashed against any object. Here our skin is there to protect our underlying tissues and organs from the injuries we suffer. But what do you think are the ways in which a plant may suffer injuries? We must know the damage caused during storms and strong gusts of winds. But here's something we might not know. I'm sure we've heard of the silkworms that feed on the mulberry leaves. For the caterpillar, the leaf is food, right? But for the plant, being eaten as food by insects and animals is one of the major daily causes of injury. We must have also seen the hair-like structures on the tomato plant or the spines on the rose plant. These are nothing but epidermal cells that grow outwards to protect the plants by preventing insects from reaching the main stem of the plant. Now coming back to us humans, 70% of our body is made up of water, some of which is lost every day. Therefore, to maintain this level, whenever we feel thirsty, we easily move to the nearest water source and quench our thirst. But this isn't generally the case with plants. They can't move and as we know, 80% of a single plant cell is made up of water. In our previous session, we've said that when water falls on a leaf, it does get wet, but the water is not absorbed by the leaf. Why was this so? This was because the leaf surface had a waterproof waxy layer over it. A clear example of such a waxy coat is the one on the lotus leaves. This very waterproof layer is secreted by none other than the epidermis and prevents water evaporating from the leaf, thereby protecting against excessive water loss from the plant. Now talking about water loss, in which type of plants is this a very important factor? You're right. For plants in the desert, as water is very scarce. Plants like the cacti 
need to conserve their water levels. Therefore, in their case, the waterproof coated epidermis is even more thicker as a second wall against water loss. Besides, if you have noticed that cactus plants lack leaves, these leaves actually have been reduced to spines as another method of water conservation adopted specially by desert plants. Now if water is so important to plants, then don't you think they need to collect or stock as much as possible? Well, the epidermal cells that line the roots of the plant help in absorption of water by forming long hair-like structures which increase the area available for absorption. Now besides water, another essential factor that's important for life is air, which we humans breathe in through our nostril. Similarly, plants also have to breathe to take in carbon dioxide needed for photosynthesis. This is made possible by the presence of tiny openings or pores in the continuous layer of the epidermis that function as plant nostrils. These pores are called stomata. Through these pores, carbon dioxide is taken in and oxygen is given out, which we humans and other animals breathe in or utilize. But besides these gases, water vapor is also released into the outside air from the leaf surface by a process known as transpiration due to the sun's heat. Now imagine if these pores were constantly open. This would be similar to us leaving a tap open continuously. Water vapor would be released in excessive amounts. This would deplete the amount of water in the plant. And this would ultimately end with the plant drying up completely. Therefore, just like the tap, the opening and closing of these pores is controlled by special cells only when required and hence are rightly called the guard cells. Is this shape familiar? Now here's a fact for y'all. Did you know the number of stomata are always higher on the lower surface than on the upper surface? And generally, Cactus plants open their stomata only during the night. Can you tell me what could be the reason for this behavior? As the plant grows taller and bigger, this single layer epidermis can no longer provide the necessary protection. Therefore, it's replaced by another layer which gradually forms around the stem as the plant grows into a tree. We all know this layer to be the bark of the tree. This is formed by a secondary meristem tissue, to be specific, the lateral meristem, as seen in our previous session. As the width of the tree increases, newer layers of bark are added and it is these very layers that form the tree rings. This bark is now the first line of defense against the various environmental factors. Additionally, it also contains a waterproof waxy substance, hence minimizing water loss from the stem as well as preventing insect and fungal attacks. Therefore, to sum up our entire session on plant tissues, let's go back to the very beginning. The meristematic tissues of the plant result in the growth of the plant. The different types of simple and complex permanent tissues make up the entire plant while carrying out varied functions, whereas the epidermis and later the bark aid in protecting the entire plant. And it is these very plants, my friends, 
that play their part unselfishly in making sure life continues on our beloved planet. Well, besides being the lungs of the earth, they also provide food to us and other animals, medicine and various other services we might not even know about. And therefore, it is our mission to make sure that these precious forests are used sustainably. If you found the session helpful, do like and leave us your comments. Do subscribe to Let's Do It for more such videos. Thanks for watching.